Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, DxO updated the Nick Collection to version 4. In this video, we're going to talk about what's new and exciting in this latest version of the Nick Collection. Now, it's Nick Collection 4, but they really updated three things. They updated Silver Effects Pro to version 3. So, Silver Effects Pro 3 is new in the Nick Collection 4. They've also updated Viveza to version 3. So Viveza 3 is new in the Nick Collection 4. And they also added meta presets for Photoshop. And we're going to go over all the new things, which are these three new things. Um, let's start out with Viveza 3. I have an image here, and I'm just going to open it up into Viveza 3. Now, Right away, they, they updated the UI, so it's got this kind of darker look that's real popular now. I guess it looks more like Photoshop, maybe Lightroom. That's what a lot of people say. I don't necessarily agree, but you could see that's new. Also, they added presets to it. There were never presets in Viveza 3. There's only actually nine. If you look over here and look at it, it says all or 10. There's really not 10. One of those presets is neutral, and all that is is everything zeroed out. So that's as though you just opened an image into Viveza 3. And the reason why you might want to have that preset is that if you pick, let's say, Golden Hour preset and you don't like it and you just want to start over, just go right back to Neutral and it will wipe out the preset previously. And that's what all these presets do. As you apply them, uh, they just totally replace the previous preset. So that was Golden Hour. This is Blue Hour. This is Remove Color Cast. This is Fill Light. This is Darken. This is Tonal Adjustment. This is Sharpen Eyes. Now this, of course, is for a portrait. You can see it has two control points here for each of the eyes on your subject. And I'll talk about that in a moment. We'll put a portrait in here and I'll show you how that works. They also have um, Soften Skin. And of course, that's for a portrait. And there's a control point for that. And they have this one called High Contrast. Now, personally, I don't really care for any of these, but what I would often do with Nick product is I would pick a preset that gets me close to what I want. In this case, the closest one, I think for me at least, is tonal adjustment. Then what you could do is you could go over to the right and you could adjust your sliders to taste. So if I want to come in and I want um, to add a little more saturation, let's say, I want to go down here to selective tones and I want to maybe add a little more blacks, maybe, just a little bit. Bring midtones up a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So I could come in here and do what I like. Now the big thing about the Nick Collection, and this was really innovative when the Nick Collection first come out, came out. As a matter of fact, Nick Collection was the first plugin I ever purchased, probably around 2013 or something like that. And it was really expensive at the time. They were their own company called Nick Software, and those of you that know the sequence of events, they sold out to Google and Google marketed it for a while. Then Google made it free and you could get it for free. Then Google sold it to DxO and then DxO has been doing updates to it over the last past few years. Now, the big thing though, control points when it first came out back in the, you know, 20, whatever, 2013 was when I think I got it. Um, they were innovative compared to doing masking in Photoshop. And at that time, Lightroom didn't have any type of masking at all. Uh, no types of things to make sure that you're putting a local adjustment, you know, on specific tones or in specific areas. Control points allowed you to do that. So what you could do is you could grab a control point and your cursor turns into this little circle and apply it, let's say, on the blue sky. Then you have this little slider here, and this little slider here allows you to adjust the area that it will affect. And you can see how that circle is like now on the entire image, but what the control point does is right where you place it, it looks directly under that pin at the tone, texture, and color, and it tries to then only affect similar tone, texture, and color. Control points are nowhere near as effective as using masking in Photoshop. Um, even the masking, I think, in Lightroom might be a little better. But they did improve, I guess, the, the way the control points work in this Nick Collection 4. So we added a control point to 
the sky. Now, when you add a control point, then the adjustments for the control point appear below it. So up above it, these are global adjustments. These are, were the ones I, were, I was just adjusting. Now I wanna affect the control point, I have to go down here below. So let's say I just wanna take, I don't know, let's go to midtones. That's probably for the blue sky and I wanna bring those down. Okay, so I'm making the blue sky darker, obviously, right? So I, it's just affecting that. Now if you wanna add a second control point, you could click on the control point tool right there. And let's say I want to add it to this kind of gravel over here at the edge. Click there. I could bring down that circle a little bit. I call it the area of influence. Whether or not you want to call it, that's up to you. And then I could come in and let's say open up the shadows there. So I can make that area a little brighter. You can see how it's only affecting that area, not affecting anywhere else in the image. Although, as I mentioned, they're not really as precise as you may like them to be. You may have noticed it started to affect the rocks, stones around that a little bit but they are what they are so those are uh you know that's basically how you would use viveza i did do videos in the past going in detail processing an entire image with viveza really not much has changed outside of them adding those presets and supposedly making the control point technology a little better and um the the overall ui difference now, one thing you have to be careful of, I did adjustments to this image. A lot of times in Photoshop, when I work in Photoshop and I'm, I did what I want to do, I, I didn't save it yet, but I'll hit Command Q on my Mac because it's fast to quit Photoshop. But Photoshop always prompts you to save it. So then I'll save it. It's just a habit. If I hit Command Q here, I just closed it and lost everything. So that you need to be aware of. Those of you that are foolish like me, and hit Command Q when you're in a program with a Mac. You just close it, and I'm sure with a Windows computer when you close it down as well, um, it's gonna do the same thing. Now let's open up a portrait in Viveza, and I just wanna show you the sharpen eyes and the softened skin. So we'll click on sharpen eyes, and when you do that, you get the two control points. And if you look over here on the right, you can see there's right eye and left eye. The right eye one is active, so I'll take that, I'll try to take that, and I'll put it over her iris of her, or on, well, should it be her right eye or my right eye? I don't know, for, for my right. Let's do it, her right eye, her left eye. Doesn't matter, really. Doesn't matter at all. All right, so we'll move that over there. We'll adjust the size so it's just around her iris, pretty much. All right, and then you could see that when I come off it, uh, the adjustments that it did for those eye, uh, the eye adjustments themselves, right? And you could turn it off. There's before. I get rid of that pin over there. Doesn't want me to do it. Let's see here. If I hold the command key in and click on that. Yeah, that did it. Okay, there we go. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. Now it has a softened skin preset as well. But I mentioned, when you add a preset on top of a preset, you lost, lost the eye preset. It totally loses it. Now, if you look at the skin preset, let's make it so it just covers her face mainly. Right? Um, it really is just one slider. It's the structure slider turned down. So you could easily add the eye preset, which is like three or four sliders that it adjusted, and then manually add a preset for the skin that will affect um, only her skin. It's even doing much, not doing much on this portrait. And that's the presets for the eyes and the skin that are in Viveza 3. Let's talk about, um, let's close that down. Let's talk about Silver Effects Pro 3, which I've uh, often mentioned that Silver Effects Pro is my favorite black and white plugin, and nothing has changed. Even with the updates, they updated the UI, uh, so it's got a similar looking UI to Viveza 3. They've added some presets, and typically uh, what I do, and I mention this many times with any NIC product, I like to go through the presets first to see if there's something that will get me close. Now they added these on Vogue presets, uh, but I go through and I'll just click on ones, I'll look at the little postage stamp here and see if there's something that looks like I might want it want to use. 
So I'll click on that. And like, I don't like that one. And I'll go to this one. That one's okay. But I'll go through and find one that I think is close to what I want. In this case, uh, number six, high structure smooth, is close. Then I'll come over here on the right and I'll adjust it from this point forward. So I could come in and, I don't know. I want to get that sky a little lighter. And in lieu of using a control point, what I could do is probably just bring highlights down. And midtones down. See how that affects that. Those are structure adjustments, though. I wasn't reading what I was reading here. Here we go. Now, now we're cooking. We're actually affecting the tone. Excuse me on that. So we'll come in and you know, come down here to contrast adjustment. No, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. We'll come in and we'll bring shadows down a little bit. All right, so anyways, you've got the idea. You could come in and readjust uh, things accordingly. Uh, now, um, overall, uh, like, it hasn't changed. It's still probably my favorite black and white plugin. Let's close that down for a minute, and I'll open up a portrait in it. Uh, what they also added is they also added some film types. Uh, those of you that follow my channel and whatnot know that um, I shoot a lot of film. Probably 20% of my photography is film. And if you go down here, uh, you'll see film types right here. And we'll open that up. And they've added, if you go to this drop down, you'll see that there's a lot of different film types in here. Um, so you could get a film look uh, to your image. Uh, I don't know. Let's say uh, Agfa AP APX Pro 100. So that's that look. Um, now one thing about film types, and I'm not sure anyone has really mentioned, those of you that develop your own film like me know that the developer, what type of developer you use will affect the look. Um, you could use a developer that will make it look really grainy, and then you could use a different developer that makes it look almost grain-free, depending on the film, of course. You have others that are, give you more contrast, others less contrast, and so on. So when it says it's emulating a specific film, um, I'm not really sure, you know, what, you know, type of developer they're, they, they looked at when they tried to create these different looks. So to me, it's really nothing more than a name here, like Fuji Neo Pan 400. Uh, that film specifically I've used a long time ago, and I could get it to look totally different depending on the developer I used. So these are just names. And you're just basically getting a look for your image, in my opinion. All right, so take that for what it's worth. But it still is kind of a nice feature, kind of gives you a kind of a film look, whether or not it's in actually uh, looks like that specific film that maybe you used to shoot when you shoot shot film and developed it yourself. That's debatable, but it's still kind of cool. I like that feature there. I'm going to get out of here and we're going to open an image up into Photoshop and I'm going to show you those meta presets. Uh, for Photoshop that are included here. Now, um, overall, you know, like I said, there's here I opened up in Camera Raw. Let's open that up in Photoshop. Now, overall, you know, it's it's a good update as far as the you know SilverFX Pro three and Viveza. Some of the technology, though, in my opinion, this is still my opinion. I know a lot of people that are going to get mad at me, but like the control point technology is still behind even like Lightroom, what Lightroom has come up with now. So I really hope in future updates, they update that type of, uh, that technology and maybe just uh, abandon control points and come up with some different type of masking that is as easy to use as control points, but more effective. Now, as far as these meta presets for Photoshop, when you open an image up into Photoshop, go up to File, down to Automate, and then down to Nix Selective Tool 2. You open that. Now this isn't new. This When you install um, Nick, the Nick collection, whatever, into, um, into Photoshop, this would pop up a lot. You could just close it down and get rid of it so it doesn't open up. And then go up to File, Automate, and over to this Nick Collection Selective Tool. And th this is all the same right? You could send an image into analog effects, over effects, whatever. But what is new? These meta presets, you open this little, click on this little triangle here to open it up. 
and you can see that there's these presets. And what they do is they use two different NIC collection uh, plugins to get a look, a specific look. Now, what's kind of bad about it is you really don't have an idea what it's going to look like. There's not a preview. Now, you could click on the little question mark there, and it was it tells you a fun take on the Adox Silvermax 21 film type that is adapted and mixed with the use of HDR Effects Pro, Pro to create an interesting variation of a high contrast look that retains a lot of shadow detail. Okay, let's try that. Now you click on it, and what will happen in the lower left hand corner, you can see it's chugging away, doing whatever it's doing. And some of these take uh, quite a long time to get applied to the image. And one thing you have to be aware of when it gets applied to the image, it doesn't create its own layer. It gets applied to whatever layer you were on. And in this case, I don't like this look. And it's applied to that background layer. So in a way, I mean, at, at this point I could undo it. But if I save this as a TIFF file, PSD file, and come back into it, it's gonna lose the history panel and then I won't be able to undo it. So it is destructive. So before I close down Photoshop, I would go up to the history panel and I would go back to the open state so I could undo it. So I guess you just kind of try these one by one and see if there's one you like. Let's try expired film. Now, actually what I should have did, and I was gonna, but I'll do it in a minute. Before you apply these, duplicate your background layer so that you're applying it to a new layer. That way, if your computer crashes or something happens, I don't know, you'd be able to undo it. You're still chugging away over here in the lower left, even though it's showing us a version. And there it is there. Okay, let's go back and just undo that. Let's pick one more. Soft and dramatic, let's try that, all right? But before I do that, I keep saying it, uh, let's duplicate the background layer, hit Command-J on my Mac, Control-J on a PC, then let's go and hit soft and dramatic, click there, and let it do its thing. And you can see in the something here, and then in the lower left, it's chugging away, doing whatever it does, and see what it does. Okay, that one's not as bad as the other ones, in my opinion. We'll close that down. So there's before, there's after. So, you know, you don't like it, then just throw that layer away. You could actually save this and come back in and then later throw that layer away. That makes it more non-destructive than the other way I was talking about. And we're right back where we started. So those are the meta presets for Photoshop. Personally, that's not anything I would ever use. Let me know in the comments below. Is that something you would think you're, you would use? Overall, what do you think of this update? Um, I think it's okay. I mean, I like some of the, I still like Silver FX Pro 3. That is still my favorite plugin for black and white images. When I did um, my kind of project of photographing all the, uh, statues in Forest Lawn Cemetery. Forest Lawn Cemetery is a huge cemetery in Buffalo where all famous people from Buffalo are buried there, like Rick James, um, President Fillmore, a lot of different notable Buffalonians are buried there. And there's tons of statues that are well over 100 years old that I photographed. And I used uh, Nick Silverfax Pro 3 because I made that a black and white project. And I use Nick Silver Effects Pro 3 on all those images uh, to come up with that. So let me know, what do you think about this update in the comments below? Uh, in the link in the description below, I have links to their website. You could download a trial version and try it out for yourself. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.